This is the third question. It's uh, sort of uh, similar in a sense. So draw the extensive form of the following game. Uh, invent your own payoff vectors because I give you no payoff information. Fine. There's an industry in which two firms compete as follows. First, firm one decides whether to set a high price or a low price. All right, firm one, high price or low price. Um, after seeing firm one's price, firm two decides whether to set a high price or low price. Okay, so here, this piece of information is very important. After seeing the first firm choice, that means there is no blindfold uh, folded decision. So the second firm observes the first firm decision. So these decision nodes are not going to be on the same info set. That's important. And the second firm also decides high or low. All right. So this is the uh, second player, a uh, second firm. I'm sorry. If both firms selected the low price, then the game ends. All right. Um, with no further interaction. All right. So that means here the game ends. And I'm going to assume here zero, zero, zero payoff. All right. Because I want to construct the normal form representation of this game again. Um, if either or both firms selected the high price. Okay. So if either or both firms selected the high price, meaning at least one firm selected high price, then the attorney general, so there's a third player, decides whether to prosecute P or not, N, for anti-competitive behavior. In this case, the attorney general does not observe which firm selected the higher, uh, high price or if both firms selected the high price. So what does that mean? That means if at least one firm selected high price, uh, the attorney general sort of get information because the price is higher, the market price is higher, but, the, but, but he cannot distinguish whether it's coming from the first firm or the second firm or maybe both. So what does that mean? That means all these nodes are going to be included in the same info set because remember here both of both of these firms are choosing high here firm one is choosing high here firm two is choosing high and attorney general cannot distinguish this i'm going to call him player three and he has two available actions prosecute or not so p versus n so i'm going to put p and p n uh, at each decision note in this info set because he cannot distinguish any of those uh, decision nodes. Um, and that's it. So that's the game. So the question is, what are the available strategies for the players? Uh, and what are the, um, what are the um, uh, normal form representation? I mean, if you like, we can put payoffs. I'm just making them up. Three, 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 one, 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 two, zero, one, one, zero, two. Okay, uh, who cares about the numbers? I just wanted to use them to create my metrics form. So here, once again, player one's strategy set, player two and player three. And once again, uh, strategy is a function which maps each info set into an available action. So how many info set does player one have? Well, he has only one info set. And in this info set, he has two available actions. So he must have two to the power one strategies. And they are basically H and L. Good. What about player two? Hmm. So here, by the way, we left HL, HL here on purpose because he literally has two available actions, choose high price or low price. However, this high price is a, under a different circumstances uh, where player one played L, all right? So sometimes in some games, if there's no such story, we, we usually call these uh, different letters, right? H, L, M, N, whatever. But here the story is consistent with H, L, H, L. All right, fine. But you shouldn't uh, confused about um, the following thing. I mean, how do we define strategy? Again, strategy is a function mapping each info set into an action. All right, how many info set does player two have? Don't forget, the, inform the information sets are all about decision nodes of a player. So how many decision nodes 
Uh, but don't forget, two decision nodes that are in the same info set do not count as two. It counts as one, all right? So that's sort of the trick. Here, however, this guy has um, two decision nodes because he is choosing, I mean, there are two potential instances for him to choose an action. So he has two decision nodes, uh, but they're not included in the same info set. So they can count two uh, actually. So, so here, this guy has two info sets and at each info set, he has two available actions, available actions. So therefore two to the power two, four potential strategies for this guy. All right, but question is, is this his strategy set? No. No, it's not. It's not. No. Okay. It's only H -H. It should be H H H L. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good, guys. First of all, look, a set by definition, right? These are mathematical concepts. A set having H H is, is meaningless because in a set, uh, you, 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 you can't repeat the same element. All right. So this is H, this is H. Well, what the heck does that mean? So so this four, I mean, the, the purpose is to create four strategy, but you can't do it really this way. What you have to do, you have to tell me what this player is going to do in the first decision note. So let's call this the first decision note. And this is the second decision note of player two. And what he is going to do in the second decision note. All right. So there are four p uh, p uh, possible uh, combinations, right? In the first decision note, he may actually play H. In the second decision note, H as well. Or he plays H here, L here, or L here, H here, or maybe he's gonna play L in both. So therefore he has four uh, strategies, okay? So we are sort of finding the combination of uh, available, uh, uh, decision notes and, and available action combinations. And this is how we generate those four strategies. Is that clear now? Yeah. Okay, exactly. These are the available strategies for the second player. What about the third player? Third player has three decision notes, but remember they don't count as three. I mean, PPP, for example, is not a strategy for players uh, uh, three or P, uh, and P. This is, these are not strategies, again, because these decision nodes are in the same info sets, all right? And if this is the case, those three decision nodes are not going to be counted as three. It's just one. So therefore, he has one info set, two available actions. That means two to the power one available strategies. P and N. That's it. Okay? So, that means if we want to write the normal form representation of this game, we are going to have player one is a role player. Always put player one or the first player as a role player, player two as the column player, player three as the matrix player. Always do or always follow this because this is sort of the, uh, you know, the standard uh, approach we have. Uh, the column player, the player two, has four strategies. So there's going to be four columns, but two uh, rows. HL belongs to player one. HH, HL, LH, LL belong to the player two. And obviously the matrix belongs to player three. This is when P is played. So I need to write another matrix. Um, this is HL again, this is HH, HL. Try to keep the order the same because otherwise things are going to get very complicated, trust me. And so this is when the third player plays N. And then the rest is basically filling up those uh, uh, boxes. I'm not going to do it completely. I mean, I think you can complete it by yourself, but maybe the most complicated one is when the player one plays H, for example. All right and player two plays H. Always, if you like, you can put arrow. So one plays H, two plays H, and then here what he plays is irrelevant, all right? 
So for that reason, I didn't put an arrow there. And then the th player three is playing P, for example. So where is this? H, H, P. So player one plays H, player two plays H on the first and H in the second, for example. And then the third player plays P. All right, because the third player is playing P, we are in this matrix, good. The first guy is playing H, so we are on this row. And then the second player is playing H on the first. So this is one of the, those, this is the second, right? It really doesn't matter what he's gonna play on the second uh, uh, info set decision note, uh, because the game is not gonna be on this side of this uh, game tree. So therefore the payoffs here and here must be the same. What is the payoff here? It's one, zero, two, one, zero, two. And so therefore same one, zero, two, I'm sorry, my uh, commas are horrible, all right? So that's it. This is basically how you construct. It's like, if you like, you can keep assuming the third guy plays P and then fill out, for example, H, H, uh, or H, L, P, all right? So the first guy is playing H again, and then he plays L. This is where L is. Um, important is, don't forget, here the order is very important as you see, right? Here the first uh, letter corresponds to the first decision note and the second letter corresponds to the second decision note. So therefore, um, for example, the next payoff I'm going to put HLP uh, is 111. But this is not 111. Why is that? Well, because here in the first decision note, he's not playing L, he's playing H. So be careful about all this, uh, otherwise uh, you're going to transform the entire game in a wrong fashion. So uh, this is going to be one. So if you transform the game wrong, obviously your solution will be wrong. So be, you, you, you need to be careful about it. So this is how we transform the game into a matrix form. Um, well, we don't call it matrix form uh, formally, we call it normal form or strategic form, but sometimes informally we call it matrix form. Uh, there's no uh, harm with this.